It has been uh, quite a two days, hasn't it? How is our energy levels now? What do I see? Okay, I see lots of thumbs up. What about this? And those people are out of the room, yes? That's the way it goes. So this is me and my t-shirt that everybody's been talking about. As I said, first time in my life, I'm on the stage, especially on the stage with ministers, the commissioner, wearing the t-shirt. But this is not just another t-shirt. This is a t-shirt uh, made by uh, uh, amazing Latvian designers from a brand, Taste Latvia. Everything you've seen on the stage uh, from the moderators have been a great uh, uh, a work of, of uh, Latvian designers. And not only the moderators. If you saw uh, the minister wearing this brilliant, brilliant uh, a blue dress yesterday, and when you see the minister from Latvia, Darcy Melbarde, today here coming to the stage with this brilliant, fantastic, and there's another word I will not use uh, out of the political correctness, but great dress. Uh, uh, this is all, uh, uh, all amazing uh, uh, creation by Latvian designers. So, uh, so I think uh, this, is a, this has a huge economic potential for Latvia for exporting uh, uh, as well. Also, I, I uh, remind you that uh, we are being watched uh, uh, via online stream. I know that there are hundreds of people watching us from, from all, of, all across Europe, and especially I would like to uh, say my greetings to many people watching us from Ukraine. Um, as you know, times are difficult in Ukraine. They, they cannot join us for many different reasons, but I know that there are hundreds of people from Ukraine uh, watching attentively what we've been telling here in the last two days. So, uh, good to see you that... And then all, always also been actively tweeting and, and, and uh, commenting on Facebook, so keep on doing this. But without further ado, we've been now uh, been inspired uh, by uh, a palette of different examples, case studies uh, from all different areas of life, uh, creative crossovers to social innovation, healthcare, sustainable development, uh, uh, urban regional development, etc., etc. So now, quite in the end of the program, it is time to hear from the policymakers. What do they make out of it? How do they see the main obstacles? that are facing culture creative industries, especially in terms of making those crossovers happen more often. And also, what are the ideas from the policymakers? How can they, on different levels, help uh, the culture creative industries, creative sectors, but also the other sectors, to make this bridge even stronger? So this is, this is the, the, the question that we're going to talk about. I'm so honored to invite uh, uh, to the stage all the speakers. So please, you can take the stage and I will also tell you who they are. So we have uh, from uh, Latvia, the Latvian Minister of Culture, Madam Minister, uh, Darce Melbarga. <laughs> As the next President of the European Union, uh, the Minister of Culture from Luxembourg, Madame Magie, Maggie Nagel. The floor is yours. From Netherlands, uh, Director General at the Ministry of Education, Culture and Science, Madame Marianne Hammersma. The floor is yours. Then uh, from the European Commission, from different uh, uh, director generals, uh, I'm happy to invite from the uh, uh, DG, Interne Internal Market Industry Entrepreneurship and SMEs, uh, Mr. Jean-Francois Aguena. Where are you? Oh, there you are. The floor is yours. From the uh, DG, Education and Culture, Walter Sampieri. Walter, the floor is yours. From DG uh, Communication Networks, Content Technology, 
Federico Milani. The floor is yours. I don't know if you know this, but this is a really a historic moment. You know, it's a culture conference, and already we see uh, so different teachers uh, represented here. So we are making kind of history here. That's a great, great thing. Um, <laughs> but we don't want to only stay on the government's level and the, uh, and the, uh, and the EU level. We also have to want to look at the regional level and kind of a local level. So uh, two more speakers I want to invite. One is uh, Jordi Sellas y Ferres, who is from uh, Barcelona, from Catalonia. The floor is yours. <laughs> and uh, from uh, Latvian uh, uh, investment and Development Agency, Andris Ozols. The floor is yours as well. <laughs> wow. Lot of people, uh, great ideas. You will have a chance to join us uh, in the debate. So have your questions ready. We have one and a half hours uh, or a bit less to discuss these issues. And if you have any pressing questions, just uh, show with your hand and we will come with this box. We will throw these boxes. Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, you have your catch boxes, so feel free to use them. Throw between yourselves. You don't have to speak very closely. You can, it can be here as well, OK? Uh, to start with, um, if you allow me, some of you have been here now for two days and listening to many of the speeches and, and, and these examples. And I would really like to start with, from your personal reflections, not all of you, you don't have to take the floor now, if you, if you haven't been here before or you just arrived, but for those who have listened, I would really like to hear some of your reflections. What, what would you take away from these two days? Was there something surprising that you hadn't been thinking about before when thinking about culture creative crossovers. So very informally, very down to earth, anything that, that really stuck in your uh, mind over the past two days. Madam Minister uh, Melbarte, maybe you could start. Yes, you can, you can start with the box. Did you, did you tell the story of the catch box? No. You didn't tell? No. Okay. So, because it's a co-production and a, a very good example of the, the crossover. It's, it's actually uh, uh, co-produced co by the Finnish and the Latvian uh, creative professionals. It's, again, a very good example of, of the crossovers, how we can cross over the sea and, 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 and uh, to have synergies uh, of, uh, of the creative potential of two nations. Uh. So, um, mm, uh, yes, um, I, I, uh, when I was listening to the yesterday's presentations, uh, uh, of course I, I tried to put myself in my, in, in my current uh, capacity and, 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 to, and uh, just to, to understand which are the next steps and, and, and first of all, which are the obstacles uh, uh, which um, we have to overtake in, 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 in a close future uh, to promote crossovers in Latvia. And uh, what I know very well, uh, as I told yesterday, I've been working uh, in a different capacities for the creative industries uh, in Latvia uh, for more than 10 years. But I know very well that the understanding of creative industries and the, on, and the, and the potential of creative sector and culture of sector uh, is very um, clear uh, among the specialists of uh, working for culture area. And it's also very clear for the creative enter entrepreneurs. <laughs> Uh, but what, but, but uh, what we, but we have a, a, a very lack of understanding sometimes in the um, uh, levels uh, of uh, where people take decisions. And I think that was a very good uh, presentation yesterday uh, coming from Finland. It was a second presentation, which very clear, clearly showed that, that we are dealing with the problems of the 21st century with the institutional traditions of the uh, 18th century. And I think it, it very well illustrated situation also in Latvia. Uh, that, uh, we are still, we are thinking and we are acting in the boxes. Uh, uh, we have a, a national development plan in Latvia which uh, uh, was intended um, 
uh, to focus on the objectives, intersectoral objectives, uh, but what we lack afterwards are the real mechanisms um, how to reach these objectives, which are formulated in an intersectoral way. And I think that the first problem we have to start with is this very um, conservative uh, financial planning system. So, because with such financial planning system, which is uh, oriented to sectors, uh, we, we, we can't, uh, we, we, we can't uh, uh, say, uh, um, put crossover idea and concept on the systematic uh, basis. Uh, so it, it's, it's a first. Uh, so and uh, and of course everything starts with understanding and uh, with uh, uh, breaking of um, uh, assumptions and stereotypes about culture. Uh, <clears throat> and quite often when you see the titles of the conferences, for example, creative and cultural crossovers, you look at the title, ah, it's not, the, it's not for me, it's, a, it's about culture. So it's, it's not my business. So it, it means then the second thing we have to, uh, we have to work on is again to deepen comprehension, particularly for uh, decision makers on, on the, on, on, on the uh, uh, different um, roles culture or creative sector really can play in, 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 in nowadays. Oh, I will you. continue later. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Madame Ministre, vous avez quelques réflexions? Oui, uh, tout d'abord, uh, bonjour. Uh, je ne vais pas... Madam Minister, do you have anything to add? Yes. Thank you. I am not going to apologize for speaking in French, but I can um, uh, say straightforward, I'm not going to speak uh, Luxembourg French, so that's why the interpreters are going to have an easier task. I'm going to speak normal French. I was invited to Riga, thank you, Madam Minister of Latvia, for inviting us already yesterday. We were here and we were listening to all the presentation yes, yesterday. And if we are speaking about culture, identity of a state, identity of its citizens, it is an interesting theme. And I was very surprised that everyone was speaking in English about those themes. I have nothing against, uh, against English, but if people are on stage and they are speaking their own language, that uh, can be counted as this spillover or crossover effect as itself. And I think that uh, European languages and cultures should be represented uh, properly. And that's why I'm going to speak French. Since 2013, uh, December, um, in Luxembourg, there is a new government in place and um, if we look at the policy processes uh, then it's very noticeable that uh, this new government is also younger by age not only new government and our prime minister is young, a young person uh, Luxembourg is um, a small country with about 50 percent of uh, descendants of foreign origins. We have um, many, many backgrounds of our inhabitants, of our citizens, and this crossover between sectors is very topical for us. And we want to change, and we have to change, but we have to understand how to change and where to go. Uh, yesterday I was listening to speakers and I um, have to say that in Riga, in these surroundings, in this environment, I feel very well. I feel not so far away from you. We have very much in common between our countries. I spoke to Madam Minister, to others whom I met yesterday. We are going into the right direction, but we have to support each other and we have to support the creativity of our citizens. And that is one thing that is very close to my heart. And I would like to note that we have to change. We all agree to that. We have to change the character of our dialogue, especially politically, because often 
We need to actually meet each other face to face. We have to talk to each other in order to solve the issues. We have to have those communications on all the levels in order to share our ideas and all the cooperation platforms as well as um, spendings of the financial support where we have to seek for uh, well thought solutions. We have to engage all the sectors we have to have all the ministers to understand that economy is void without culture. Finance is void without culture. Nothing happens without, without culture. And that's why, with great joy, I speak those words to you today. Thank you. Um, you speak um, with those themes with other ministers, with the Minister of Economy, of Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, in Luxembourg. Are you doing that? That's why my question. Yes, we do speak about those issues with all the, go all the ministers. We have a new government, as I said, and we have to have these synergies and new solutions between ministries. And that's why the cooperation starts, starts on a ministerial level, on the level of ministers. We share competencies. We share um, new ideas, what culture can give to the economy, to the um, Ministry of uh, Tourism, of um, state governments, and others. We have to work together. We have to, and we do uh, look for a new dialogue. We exchange ideas, uh, opinions. We uh, give um, our consultations to all the government institutions. That's why I think our way uh, for seeking the solutions of the problems have changed totally. Dialogue, the necessity for dialogue in enabling those crossovers is the key. Thank you. And I, I, I absolutely agree uh, on the language point. I love this idea. I love France. And I think I could continue now moderating in Estonian, which is <laughs> in sake of being one of the smallest languages in Estonia, uh, in, the, in Europe. Thank you. Uh, Madame Hammersma, uh, Netherlands uh, constantly is brought out in Europe as being one of the best examples of culture creative industries, the role that they play in, in society, in the national economy, and also the in innovative power of culture creativity. How have you achieved that? And is it really so, uh, is it really such a success story, or what's the real story behind it? Well, I'm glad that other people think it's a success story because we don't think it is. Um, although we, we have set some steps uh, in the last years, I think. And probably one of the best measures has been that we joined efforts as departments, as ministries. We have this special, what we call top sector policy and the uh, Ministry of Education, Culture and Science the Ministry of Economic Affairs and the Ministry of International Affairs combined forces and designed a program um, which consists of four pillars, an international agenda, an education agenda, a re research agenda and a financial agenda. And those four pillars have helped us to gain some efforts the last years. And we see now the results of this approach. But then again, we have the same challenges as my colleagues mentioned. We still have to convince um, governments, other parts of industries, of the added value of creativity, of the added value of a cultural approach, of design thinking. And we still have to convince the banks and other investors of investing in creative ideas and creative solutions. So I think we, we designed an approach of how to deal with it, but we still have many wishes. Thank you. We will come back to, uh, to uh, the Dutch case, but before, I would like to jump over from the European Commission because it, it will be your turn. Uh, let's jump to, uh, to Barcelona. Uh, Jordi, again, 
as, as Amsterdam, mm. as being one of the, 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 the hotspots for creativity in Europe, Barcelona is also contending for this uh, position. Uh, how have you been able to, to work on different cross-sectorals, cross-departments, to make those crossovers that are so visible in, in, uh, in, in, your, in your region uh, to, to happen? What, what is, is it a deliberate policy? Or is it more uh, accidental that it happens, whether despite your efforts? <laughs> I think it's uh, usually we can say that it's part of both uh, ideas. I mean, uh, Barcelona is a creative city, and it's been a creative city si since, I don't know, uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of years ago. So and it, it, there were specific policies for creative cities or for creative policy to make creative, creative cities or creative regions. So, this is a thing that we already have. But if you don't work it, if you don't put the tools that permit uh, different sectors work together, this doesn't work. So the first challenge here is to make, to work together the Ministry of uh, uh, Industry and Enterprise and the Ministry of Culture to work together because we usually don't understand each other. You know, the, we, the people that work in culture say, okay, they don't understand us. Uh, the people in economy or in the, in the industry uh, ministries, they say, okay, uh, we start talking about business plans, and they don't know what a business plan is, so uh, we have a, a starting problem from, 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 the, from the first point. So uh, the policy has been to work together to create a professionalization program to make more professional the managers. You don't have to try to make the artist a businessman or a businesswoman. It will never be. There are some artists that are businessmen and businesswomen, but this is the exception. You need to work harder in make more professional the people that manage the cultural and creative companies. And then they will have the vocabulary, they will have the resources to work better with all the economic side, with the banks and all the economic side. And when you have this, this continuum formation program for all the creative and cultural sector for the managing, you need to create new tools, new financing tools to help these projects to work in this more professional way. Usually, when, when we work as a cultural ministry, we give subsidies, we give grants. We say, okay, you, you want to produce a theater show, a theater play, a music festival, we give you a grant. This doesn't help these people to be more professional. But if we give just a loan, a credit, it doesn't work also because they are not ready. It's a sector that's not ready also for just work alone with some kind of credit or loans as a banking system. So we created this, this project a few years ago called Repayable Contributions, which is a project that permits us to work together in the same uh, file alone at zero interest and uh, subsidy working together. We partnership with the cultural and, and, and creative companies, it doesn't matter if it's, I remember, a music festival, a theater play, a musical, or a book publisher that wants to publish 20 books this year. It can fit with any kind of these projects. We give uh, them this kind, this amount of money. We work with them together with the business plan. And if the project really works, they return all the money to the government. If the project don't work, they will pay the part of the loan, they will return the 100% of the loan, but the part of the subsidy, they will be able to keep it. So we are entering in the risk of the operation. And this is a project that we started in 2009. Now we are dedicating 7 million euros per year in this project, and we have a returning index of 89%. 89. This means that 89% of this money is used two times or three times by the government. And this is really good because it means that we, we all, <coughs> sorry, we all have mm, budget cuts. So how can we move on with the budget cuts? So creating these new financial instruments that can help us. Thank you. Um, I've, I've uh, often uh, uh, said myself that the best way to diagnose the health of a creative industry's policy situation in any country or a city or a region is to ask the culture people, the, the, the ministry people, do you have, not in theory, but in practice, in your mobile phone, right here, right now, the number and the name of your colleague from the Ministry of Economy? If the answer is yes, then there's a chance. 
The answer is no. What are we talking about? Now, in Latvia, the good thing uh, is that the business development agency, the, uh, namely the, the, um, uh, the investment and the uh, uh, development agency, uh, has been, and Andres, the director, has been at many, many events which are dedicated to culture creative industries. So it is not only in theory, not even only in the mobile phone, but actually physically here. So you work every day with questions of how to, uh, how to make Latvian economy uh, more competitive. And you're now here with the Culture Crossovers panel. How do you see the role that culture and creativity can play in achieving those results uh, uh, and these objectives uh, for Latvia? Very great question, actually. Uh, you know, we work with different industries, not only with creative industries, even though this is a really rhetoric question. I was once participating in Sweden in a seminar where the moderator was asking, um, raise a hand who is creative in his work. And all the audience was raising hands immediately, being creative in any industries. And one man didn't, you know, and he was asking, why you didn't raise your hand? Aren't you creative? Who are you? Who, who, what do you work? He said, I'm director of a Swedish nuclear plant, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, a bit makes sense. Uh, but uh, uh, Still, I would say, you know, uh, for instance, uh, woodworking sector, you produce bed with uh, metal legs. You know, you need crossover in different age. And creative dimension in other industries creates, if you uh, see from economic perspective, more economic value for the country than uh, any other cooperation between the industries. So uh, I do not simplify like meaning only good design for industrial or better ergonomics for industrial manufacturing. But this is something which really needs certain, even not if, if not support, what you said, this combination of grant and so-called financial instruments, but sometimes also a bit impulse or kick to do so. Because uh, especially in Latvia, in a rather small scale economy, uh, businessmen try to save all over the, uh, the, their business model, of course. And sometimes creative dimension is really underestimated. And that's why Minister of Culture was also, our Latvian Minister of Culture was also emphasizing that I would need to speak about creative vouchers. I wouldn't zoom in uh, in too much details, but we do have certain, we call sometimes it synthetic support instruments, how you um, help more uh, and how you push more, but not in an uh, aggressive way, so to say, to think in a different perspective. So, uh, and uh, I really think for Barcelona, for instance, I really envy you because uh, there are professions which do not work where they live, but they, uh, very creative world people, uh, cosmopolitan people decide where they want to live and they bring job with them. So, and this is a success story of Barcelona as such. For smaller, uh, then Berlin became such a city. Then, uh, and of course, Riga doesn't claim that we will be the world um, measure city, but we will have niches and in creative niches and uh, we have international presence here, living here, uh, prospering here and I think uh, we will uh, develop this uh, city and uh, this country with a class. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, the story of, uh, of uh, which is a more creative or less creative sectors reminds me this uh, one conference where there was a big debate and, and competition of who's more creative uh, sector than other, you know, am I creative or not? And then uh, it was all concluded by, uh, um, by a moderator who said, you know what is the two most, uh, single most creative sectors in the world? Well, naturally not nuclear energy, but uh, two most creative uh, uh, sectors, you know? Guess? They say it's organized crime and, and counting. And then somebody from the audience said, but it's the same thing. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so uh, thank you for this. Let's turn to the commission now. And then we round up this, this the first. Uh, DG uh, uh, Culture and DG Growth, DG uh, Connect. Um, is, it, is it often, first of all, for the audience as well, that different DGs come together on the same, sta uh, uh, the same stage, uh, same room, discuss the same matters. Do you, do you in these different fields of, of, of activities, do you, in real terms, uh, uh, feel and understand that also with an actual practice that you can 
help each other in achieving each of your goals? Or it is more of these beautiful occasions where, uh, where you have this opportunity to meet. How does it really work in the corridors of Brussels? Walter, maybe you can start. Okay, maybe I'll go first. My colleagues can have the opportunity to correct me if I <laughs> say something wrong. I think it's becoming more and more common, as a matter of fact, that we work together. There's always been the practice of working through uh, inter-service groups. But that was, uh, if I may say so, at a later stage of an initiative. What is changing now is that we are starting to work uh, earlier on, upstream. So we are cooperating in, uh, in conceiving a project, an initiative, not just in you know, the devising the legislation and uh, uh, writing down uh, the fine prints. So in that sense, the Commission is probably now at, at the forefront of, uh, of this change, of seeing how the policies are, are interrelated. We do, of course, are, like all uh, other institutions, we do suffer from the, this famous uh, silo mentality. But we are trying our utmost to, uh, to break the silos down, I would say. Um, it, also, it also comes down in the end also to personal relationships, I have to say. You, you ask me if I have the phone numbers of my colleagues, I would say yes, at my level, uh, definitely. We, but there's also this uh, policy of mobility within the Commission that probably helps. We never know what will be our next job. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but for, for the cultural and creative industries, I have to say this is, this is a good example where we cooperate together. Absolutely. Thank you. Jean-Francois. Yes. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to, uh, to congratulate the Latvian presidency for organizing such an event but also for the work they are doing uh, at the Council and trying to uh, sort of break silos between uh, the Competitiveness Council and the Culture Council, which is something of strategic nature. And by the way, I fully agree with uh, what uh, uh, Walter said. Uh, we have a new president now, Mr. Juncker from Luxembourg, and we are more than encouraged to uh, break silos. We, we, it's an instruction now we have to, to work uh, in a coordinated way. And indeed, uh, um, um, creative industries are a perfect field for uh, that sort of coordination. And it's more than just breaking the silos between uh, services of the Commission, which is something important, certainly, and to have good uh, uh, cooperation with uh, the presidency and maybe the next one as well. But also we, we see that there is a sort of alignment of uh, uh, the different uh, European institutions. For example, at the European Parliament, now you have an intergroup on creative industries. This is uh, uh, something quite interesting because um, each time there is a new parliament, they decide on a number of priority topics uh, they would like to develop uh, with a certain strength. And this is the case for creative industries. This was decided in December. There will be uh, uh, a number of meetings uh, this year where, uh, by the way, the commissioners for culture, for enterprise, and for uh, Connect will be invited together in order to uh, see what is possible to do in terms of new initiative in this area. So I see uh, that as a, a very positive development and this culture of breaking silos is uh, on track. Thank you. Federica. Well, what, what could I add? Uh, as the other uh, colleague has said, creativity is easy. It's an easy subject in, in these terms. Uh, as Tom was saying this morning, uh, you cannot think about a competitive industry or a competitive uh, um, country without thinking about a creative country, a creative city. And this one you can see it everywhere, you can see it, uh, you can see it everywhere. Therefore, uh, working together, joining up forces, uh, culture, industries, connect, and all the work that we are doing on uh, the digital society, needs to work together, we need to combine our efforts and we need to work to, together in order to uh, promote the concept of culture, uh, culture and creative crossovers. It's essential for uh, Europe at this stage 
and this is why what and this is what we are we, what we are doing as uh, our colleague were saying at all level so also at uh, at the level really of proposing new things and this is really what we are doing and what we are pushing forward thank you before taking a first round of questions i would like to turn the, the panel's attention and i please if you want to reflect or comment on now your fellow panelists feel free to do this um, so it's not a dialogue only between us but i would like to turn now as a second kind of a set of questions uh, our attention to the obstacles okay so what are the what are the prob already a couple of things came out from here the silo thinking was mentioned not enough cooperation and dialogue let me be more uh, uh, clear uh, some of you uh, were not here yesterday when uh, uh, we heard uh, the keynote speech by uh, Professor Pierre Luigi Sacco, who was saying that even though everybody's talking about creative industries and the role that cultural creativity play, especially in the, in the context of crossovers, and this discussion is not new, this has been done ten, last 10 years very actively, and everybody seems to agree. And everybody seems, and there's a lot of evidence already uh, flying around, even on this stage in the last two days, even though when you look at the uh, new period uh, documents from the European Union, if you look at the uh, smart specialization strategies that are coming in, if you look at the thematic objective where culture is not present, the question comes up and, uh, both on the national levels but also on the, uh, on the EU level. Why is culture creative uh, industries and the role that culture creativity play still not recognized on that level? Or you disagree? Anyone? Yes, Pedrick, okay, you are holding the, the box, so you have Yeah, the, this is why I want yes. to start. <laughs> well, first I want to ask one question to the audience. Uh, if I ask you which is the most creative company uh, globally, um, who will raise the, uh, their hands saying that it's Apple? Now, if I can continue to ask the questions, most probably everybody knows who Steve Jobs, who was this job, but who knows who's uh, Jonathan Ive? So every, the people that knows Jonathan Ive knows that he's English, and he went in the 92 to work together with Jonathan, uh, with uh, Steve Jobs for Apple, and he's the responsible of, design, of the design of all the products since then. Now, before to go to US, he designed for ideal standard a bidet, a toilet, and a basin. If he stayed in Europe, would he, would he con uh, have continued to design bidets, bidet, uh, and, uh, and basins? The point is that I want to make is that in a recent Harvard, Harvard Business Review report, 50, only 57% of uh, uh, leaders of industries of Europe uh, thought that creativity is important, contrary to 90% of Asian leaders. There is, as you were mentioning, there is uh, uh, at leadership level, even in industries, uh, there's not this concept of creativity as being essential for innovation extreme, uh, considered extremely important. And probably there is uh, the, the culture uh, of creativity needs to be re-injected in our industries and in our society. Uh, at all level, at develop, for example, I, I was interested in hearing this morning from Boris that they, um, in order to develop a new part of their city, they talked with artists. They, I'm sure they talked with uh, um, architectures and urbanists, but they also talked with artists. And if I'm correct, uh, with the definition of artist, is someone that doesn't have uh, the knowledge of how to build a building or an entire part of the city. But it's giving a different view and a different approach, a creative view and a different approach. And this is, I think, we should inject in entirely in our society. From the place where I'm coming, there is a sort of urban legend of uh, two parents that were called by the teacher of their five-year-old son. Uh, 
uh, and they told them, uh, and the teacher told to the, uh, to the parents, listen, you have to do something with your son. Look at this drawing. I asked him to draw an apple, and he actually did a very nice apple, but he colored it with blue and not red. You have to bring him to, the, uh, to a psychologist. So what would have said that teacher if he was the teacher of Pablo Picasso? Look, again. What is it, this a face? Where did, you put, what, what, why, where did you put the nose? And look at the eyes that you have drawn it. I think that again there we should work from the beginning, and Eak is here, uh, and promote creativity also in our schools. Change the schools, change how we see creativity and promote the skills of creativity. And this is what we are trying to do with our initiative, get artists involved, in, uh, uh, for example, in technology industries, and promote creativity and promote the teaching uh, and the development of, of, skill, uh, of creativity as a skill. Minister Melbarta, there has been over the years so, many, so much talk about uh, the role of creativity in education. It's, it's already, you know, it's old news, but still it seems that it, it's, not taking, it's not taking place. Why? I can't say that it's not taken place at all because we can find different uh, uh, schools and good examples uh, in the educational system uh, where we see that the teachers or head uh, head, uh, headmaster that they really have tried to promote creativity at school level. Um, but um, I, yeah. It's, it's a very good question because I have, I have gone through uh, this uh, initiative myself uh, because uh, four years ago I, I was working for the British Council and, uh, and uh, when I worked for the British Council I came across with a very uh, good example that the UK uh, promoted in, in, the, in, in, in the educational system as a method and approach to education called creative partnerships in education where they bring just creative artists to school they uh, so they, set, uh, they partner them with the, with, with, with the teachers for a year and the for all with the aim to bring more creative methods into the formal education system. Uh, and, uh, and, and, the, and there are evidences in place with statistics that it, it works very well. So when we, tr we try to, uh, to promote this idea in our educational system and, 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 and we, we worked with ministers of education uh, we worked with uh, municipal leaders uh, responsible for education. We have had meetings with, uh, with, uh, with, 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 with teachers and associations, and they all agree that it's an excellent approach, an excellent idea, and we have to do something like that. But when it comes to the decisions and when it comes to the real work, that people, they are sometimes so busy, and they, it's, um, that we, we've, uh, we felt that there is a kind of lack of leadership, real leadership, which is truly, uh, which truly, there uh, um, uh, is a true will to, to, to really lead a change. Walter, was yeah. uh, No, just to add that uh, I agree that fundamentally <laughs> Europe is behind the curve. It is Europe as a whole. <laughs> uh, we are trying to make a um, small contribution to the issue of uh, creativity in schools, actually. We are discussing with the OECD on ways to measure, to assess creativity in schools, uh, how you can assess it for scientific subjects, for uh, humanistic subjects, and also transdisciplinary subjects. Uh, uh, we're very interested. The OECD is also very interested. We would need uh, enough member states to participate in the project vote. Mm -hmm. So if there were enough member states, then in a couple of years we might have uh, an idea of how to measure creativity, which also always helps in the discussion with, uh, with the other ministers, I think. Yeah. Um, I can also say that in Luxembourg we have a similar situation. My personal point of view is that we have to promote the understanding of people have to engage people. We, as politicians, should engage people um, into doing something, especially putting our attention to the young people. We have already some good examples uh, on um, social integration pro pedagogical project that was um, 
uh, established in one of uh, our creative centers, and it was meant for uh, young people in order to uh, overcome problems in school. Uh, and it was based on three pillars, uh, self-expression, discoveries, and uh, new channels and new ties between um, institutions, namely schools. This project was very successful. My ministry and this creative center signed an agreement. Um, in particular, uh, for the activities amongst pupil. And this um, role of pedagogical work is very important because we have to offer an eclectic um, program. And those teachers who took part in this project stressed that we need to strengthen the role of schools when teaching uh, culture and creativity. But uh, these efforts uh, show the results. We have organized three cooperation events and three informational events with other institutions apart from school. Uh, thus, we uh, try to uh, disseminate this in other spheres, like in domains like theater, theater, cinema, and um, others. And we need to continue doing the same thing in order to promote the process of uh, acquiring knowledge amongst young people, especially knowledge on culture and creativity. I think this is a new platform for informing the society and promoting creativity. We actually start, have to start from the very bottom. Well, I also will speak in French because we are a minority here. I would like to go back to those obstacles, to, to the question of obstacles. What uh, should be done amongst the trendsetters and the politicians in order for culture to become or to conquer its place amongst other domains. Today we lack clear data and the um, poli policy makers uh, don't want to get engaged without strong evidence. The theme of today, uh, crossover or spillover, we actually can uh, confirm that we need a methodology, um, a method to evaluate what are the results, what's the performance, what's the impact on economy of those spillovers of culture as such. And only then, with enough proof, we would be stronger to engage politicians and policy makers into those processes. In many discussions I've heard that there are some uh, uh, some things that have already been done in order to evaluate and some methods, but nothing clear, nothing defined, but we have to define a common vision upon evaluation and other things as well. No doubt today the impact of creative industries is undeniable. We have uh, had all kinds of projects and all uh, the DGs were involved into this and this proves that we need to look at this problem from the perspective of entrepreneurship of uh, the perspective of economy in order to ev e evaluate the potential to perform an industrial renaissance, if I may say so. But unfortunately, we lack clear data to engage 
into these processes politically, but the activity of all the parties uh, is overwhelming, and that shows that we are on the right track. Talked about, I do agree with you, first of all, but when people talk about lack of uh, evidence, hard evidence and statistics, I, 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 I always like to say that uh, I'm not a definition or I'm not a, uh, a statistics man myself. Because I, I believe that the statistics are for non-believers. Um, and I believe uh, even the last two days have shown, you know, it's not your gut feeling, it has been such a showcase, a highlight of, of clear examples from how dance can help dementia uh, to, uh, to, to everything else. And, uh, and, uh, but you are right that uh, even though in the, in the field of cultural creativity, maybe we need less convincing than, uh, than in, in, in the other sectors that we want to talk to. But, Andres. Yeah, I, I was wondering what uh, Federico said, uh, that we need to raise uh, creativity to work on uh, uh, creativity level. Let's put it, I will simplify, uh, as uh, this topic of today's discussion is cultural and creative crossovers and uh, as uh, you said, uh, in economic benefit for the society, not culture for sake of culture or cultivate uh, how should you be trained or educated to uh, uh, understand your talent and maybe to identify super talent, but we devote this conversation uh, and discussion how to have better benefit for all the society. And here I really think that this audience here has a rather high concentration of uh, cultural and also creative people who do understand that. I, I wouldn't expect in such a co uh, conference here that we would say different. Culture is not needed or better no creativity in industry or better no ergonomics, no design. It would be stupid, you know, we, we, we just repeat uh, uh, the obvious. But what is really shortage, shortage is on industry side. So good industrial designer does know that he can add value to that chair or to those shoes. But the industry very often does not understand that or underestimate that. And I think not the number of creative understanding. I do not need this uh, uh, factory manager to become creative. I need him to understand that, to go and buy that service for creative people. And this awareness and understanding is extremely, extremely important. So not the number of creative people decide, but the coordination of creating versus <coughs> creative versus less creative. It's okay that not all are, it's like with businessmen. We uh, devote number of seminars raising entrepreneurial spirit to create businessmen out of the person who is not the businessman, who needs to work for the government or who needs to be a painter or an artist. It simply doesn't work because entrepreneurship is like your sexual preference. You just, you are that, you are born with it, you know, and, uh, and so you cannot retrain or readapt. I hear the next tweet already coming about this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Andres, 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 but still, before I give uh, that, Andres, uh, where are the CEOs of 100 top Latvian companies? Why aren't they here? And where are they? And what, what, what to do to have next time ha top, top 100 CEO or next, you know, from 100 to 200 so they could become the first 100? Where are they? They are busy working, producing. Uh. You know? <laughs> okay, but they were not willing to hear maybe what Jean Francois said that we need to work methodology on methodology to create methodology. They wanted to uh, uh, feel um, the uh, advice, particular advice. And I think they, uh, and right so, they understood that this is more identifying the approach and they are practical men. And uh, I think those who do understand that they need to urgently go and uh, order design or buy design, they do so. So I, I, I think uh, that's an answer. That's it. Thank you. I, I just uh, I agree totally with everything that Andres just told. And uh, I'd like to come back to this st statistics idea. I'm quite a lot statistics per, uh, person myself, uh, because uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the policy making, you really need uh, some statistical data and, and, and the searches. Uh, um, but um, um, I have to agree at some point that I, I, I wouldn't say that statistics uh, will save the world and will save the crossover future. Um, 
because uh, I, I know that there have been quite a good uh, studies and, and, and also statistics for creative uh, industries uh, and, and, and impact of uh, creative industries and we, we also have uh, gone around telling that during the economic crisis the creative industries and creative enterprises will uh, grow uh, op quite opposite to uh, traditional industries but it, it doesn't work <laughs> sorry to say it so uh, um, it means that there is still a kind of uh, block inside uh, and, 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 and all the uh, perceptions about it. Uh, so, and we need more time. Uh, but um, I think that it's very important, but I, I know I'd like to talk a little bit about solutions and continue Andres in that way. I think that we have to, pay, uh, to work more at the grassroots level. Uh, because the political level, uh, uh, it's, it's not uh, so stable, there is lack of, uh, of uh, consistency uh, and then there is one minister you have met and then agreed on the cooperation and then, then, uh, then the next minister come and, uh, and, uh, and it's going uh, so on and on. Uh, but it's, I think it's very important that we uh, work more at the grassroots level. And I think, I think one, day, uh, one, 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 uh, one uh, uh, line of activities uh, we really uh, have to work all together is how to create more dedicated places for multidisciplinary cooperation and networking at the grassroots level, at the community level, together with municipalities. Uh, uh, and these are creative quarters, uh, creative clusters. Uh, for example, in Latvia, we are currently in, uh, working uh, on the tobacco fabric uh, 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 project which we would like to see as a creative cluster where uh, really cult culture, uh, creative sector meet education, science, technology and business. So, uh, and, uh, uh, and we think that this is a way how we should work with other communities as well. And of course, to create such cluster, we, we need uh, some partners like Andres on the board uh, to, to, to have this balance uh, among all these uh, competences. And then the second, uh, I think the second line of activities we, ha we have to continue working on, this is capacity building of, um, of main actors. And I think that the one thing we, we, we do wrong that we organize these trainings uh, uh, separa separating teachers, culture workers, enterprises, uh, but we have to think about the capacity building uh, activities and trainings uh, for mixed groups then it would be the one way how, how we can bring these people together and, and let them think together, to, to, to learn together and, and then to work in teams uh, and, and to produce something. Uh, so, and then, uh, of course, it's uh, just thinking about susta sustainability uh, 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 and systemic approach to all, all this, uh, that it's not enough just to have uh, trainings uh, and, 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 and trainings for culture managers. Uh, but it's very important to work all, already on, uh, at the level of, of um, general education uh, to work on the development of creative mindset at schools. Uh, and if the young people come out from schools with this uh, interdisciplinary thinking, then we don't need to, to, to approach them and start telling why it's important to have synergies between culture, education and technology, because they have already learned it. It's, it is uh, the daily life thinking and, and action. And, and actually, the most uh, creative uh, companies uh, in the world are, the, uh, are kindergartens. Absolutely. And uh, this reminds me this. Uh, I know that the situation is getting better, but uh, uh, five years ago, I learned uh, uh, from Estonian uh, own experience that uh, a, um, a designer studied for five years in the Academy of Arts to become a master of design. And then uh, in the next university, Tallinn Technical University, uh, engineers are studying for five years to become a master of engineering. In those five years, they never meet. They never have any joint programs, nothing together. And then for the rest of their life, from the day one, they have to work together. And then everybody's surprised. They don't understand each other. They don't know each other. They don't speak the same language. Duh. Of course they don't do that. Uh, Marion. Yes, I, I would like to reflect a little bit more uh, on your question, why are the businessmen are not here uh, those two days? And I think that's because they are still um, believe or have great faith in technological innovation. And that brings me to a second reason. I think the creative sector itself um, is not very good in promoting and selling itself. Um, you, you mentioned it's a, a common language, to speak a common language. 
but they are small businesses, they, they want to work, they want to prove it in their projects. And what we notice is that we need a sort of promotion campaign for the creative sector. And that's what we do. We, we have, it's not statistics, I agree with you, but it is show proof in working projects. And what we like to do is every year, this is a, a joint effort of, of government and small businesses, we present this small booklet with creative projects, crossovers, that works and that seem to work. And I think that's also part of why we, um, why it's so difficult to convince industrial people, uh, leaders of great businesses, of the power of creativity. Um, they should, I think they should develop a joint language, a common language. Thank you. Two more and then I will come. Uh, so, have your questions ready? Federico, and then uh, you will be Jordi, the last one. Now, I wanted just to point out another two examples of uh, success stories on crossovers. And one was presented to us recently. It's uh, a car manufacturer. And it's, it's Mercedes. Mercedes car manufacturers, the, the, the designer uh, unit, what they do is they use the visual arts of uh, the paintings of artists in order to uh, have an idea what's the future. So they use painting that depicts the future of the cities of the town and they use this one as a reference going around to people, to users, and see if what they find appealing of that image or not. Then they give the results of this uh, uh, interview to their designer in order to design the new cars. Now, it's, it will be impossible to demonstrate through statistics that uh, uh, this, um, this method works better than other methods. But still in 2014, Mercedes had an increase of 14% of their sales with the new models that they produced. So again, this one, in my opinion, shows, although it's not statistics, that this cross, the cultural and creative crossover works, at least for a number of industries. The other example comes from Amsterdam uh, on opening up culture, uh, culture uh, information, and it's the Rijksmuseum. I, once I saw an interview, a, a speech by um, Taco Dibitz, which is the uh, curator of, uh, of uh, the Rijksmuseum. The Rijksmuseum has got an open, a completely open policies on their digital content. So they've got hundreds of thousands of uh, high resolution, extremely high resolution paintings and work of art that they detain. Uh, there are a number of cultural institutions that says that this one is a totally wrong mistake because they are selling out uh, to the people their, uh, their works. And they will have less user, that's visitors coming in through the doors. Well, actually, again, it's difficult to demonstrate it, but not only they've got a lot of visitors on their website, they've got uh, a lot of people that they are using uh, their content for producing their own uh, items, products, and on top of it, if you look at the st statistics, the number of visitors that are going through their doors is higher, for example, than uh, a similar institution, for example, from my country, the Uffizi, that they do not have this uh, kind of policy. So again, opening up, allowing people to use and to experience culture seems to work. It's true. It's not statistics, but they are good examples. And I think it's very good that you mentioned this because we've been talking about this, but maybe not clearly enough, that when we talk about crossovers, we don't talk about only crossovers from culture creative sectors to other areas of life, but at the same time crossovers from the other sectors of life to creative <coughs> industries and cultural sectors themselves, like the examples that you just brought, how museums could win from this kind of cooperation as well as crossovers between the subsectors of creative industries, which we think is so natural, but actually is not the case. Short. Yes, uh, talking just about this, <clears throat> I think that we as um, people that work at the governments or uh, different kind of institutions that our, our responsibility is to, to try to, 
to uh, solve problems that exist that the system itself cannot resolve or try to, to solve some problems or to give some tools to make these uh, problems solved. In the smart specialization strategy, for example, each country or each region can decide uh, how can they manage this kind of uh, funds. For example, uh, what we've done is to create uh, a group uh, to, to define a perimeter of what are the uh, the industries and or the companies that are related to the creative and cultural part and try to make first them work together and after this we go for the others this four first are the culture companies the tourism the sports and the media we make them work together the ceos of the companies with the government together culture and economy eh, and, and industry so we create this group with the CEOs of the different, the biggest companies in, in, in Catalonia, the big media, the big, uh, uh, I don't know, football club Barcelona, also team, uh, uh, the big museums, the big, and they work together to try to find ways to collaborate better. And of course, if there's innovation and there's all the funding for the smart specialization strategy, it's much better because they can invest money and they can shift their investments in uh, better results. So you, you have to, take the lead in this kind of uh, 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 group creation because if not, I mean, everyone knows that the people that comes to Barcelona, comes to Catalonia, they want to see, you know, art, uh, architecture, they want to see uh, the Football Club Barcelona Museum and I don't know, uh, uh, they want to maybe uh, uh, go to some festival. So, uh, but they don't work together, they don't know each other. The companies, the CEOs, they don't know each other. So the, we, we have to be active here. And, and, and what we're doing is create these specific groups delimiting the first perimeter, what we consider the industries of the experiences. And inside here, then we make them uh, work together. So I think that we, we, we need to have some kind of leadership creating this kind of uh, uh, working groups. And if this doesn't work, as a policymakers also, we can uh, uh, force a little bit this crossover. I think it's a little bit strong what I will say now, but uh, if the telecommunication sector don't want or don't think that they have to collaborate with the audiovisual industry and they are the first ones that are very, very, very uh, happy to have nice and beautiful audiovisual contents to distribute to their networks, you have to make them work together. And if they don't work, to, if they don't want to work together, what we've done, we approved it in the Parliament of Catalonia last November. We created a law that makes that the telecommunication companies pay a specific fee to create an audiovisual fund, 20 million euros fund that it's been uh, starting this, this year. It was approved last November in the Parliament that they will really uh, give this money to create new audiovisual content that will provide content for these telecommunication companies. And we are sure that from the start it will be hard to make a law like this for them because they, they are losing profit. But in the end, they will really feel that they are involved in an audiovisual industry that's making their networks work better and their users be more happy to use them. So these are two different examples of, of how, as a policymakers, I think that we can take the leadership and, and make the private sector be more, more Brilliant. the businessman more involved. Thank you. Uh, can uh, uh, moderators help me? Uh, can you throw the boxes to the moderators? Yes. Some other. Zane, can you come and help as well? So, throw to you guys. Um, so you have a, a, a national uh, government represented here. You have the European Commission, you have the regional governments, and you have the, the actually the implementing agencies. Fantastic opportunity. I'm going to take comments, questions, reflections. I'm, I can't promise that every question that you make will be answered, but that's not the point. We just gather a couple of ideas and then we make a last round before we finish this. Okay? Does that sound like a plan? Brilliant. I already see a, a, a hand up there, a hand up there, too. Oh, oh, many. So just keep on throwing and. Yeah, just okay. throw. Exactly. All right. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Chloe. I'm from uh, Wallonia, Belgium, and I'm actually from the Ministry of Economy. Um, we have one suspect yeah. there, yes. Um, in Wallonia, uh, creative economy is actually part of the smart specialization strategy. 
through the Creative Wallonia program. And my question is, uh, well, we are meeting a lot of clusters uh, which are uh, representing uh, industries such as uh, aerospatial, green chemistry, like nothing to do with creative and cultural industry, and we are trying to um, um, raise their awareness on the added value of the creative methods. Um, at the commission level, is there um, any initiative uh, to go into the events such as this one, but that are targeting other sector and to uh, make a presentation on creative methods or, or the added value of creative industries? Mm -hmm. Thank you. You will note down the question. Let's throw them I, there's in behind there. Let's take uh, Nikki there, and then uh, we have Sveta here and uh, Ernest in this floor. Yes, yes, exactly. But let's start with Nikki. Hello. Um, I thought all, out of all the people, you would be able to catch it. I know, I had my hands full, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm Nikki Smedley, I'm from the UK. I worked in the Creative Partnerships program for about five years. And I think part of the success of that program, um, putting artists into schools, was the intermediary role of the creative agent to broker, somebody who understood the creative side of it and understood the curriculum and pedagogy at the other side. Um, I now uh, have a company called Changing Cultures and one strand of our work very much carries that on. Um, going to your point earlier about measuring creativity, we do have ways that we've developed to measure creativity, but to be honest, what we find really is that it shows in the normal school data, but it shows over time. And I think people need to be patient to see the results over some period of time, that some of these creative projects can't just go wham and, and be brilliant straight away. You need to see the impact over a certain length of time. Um, another problem that we find in the UK is our transition between primary and secondary, um, that children really suffer with that change in the level and even I think if your education system doesn't necessarily have that break still over time as the children develop the creativity that they may have involved in their young enjoyed in their younger years drops off and I think that has a really negative impact on how they develop and how they learn so I'm interested to know um, what you might be thinking of doing to address that and how they might be age appropriate and challenging ways to keep that level of self-development and individual learning and creativity as they go through school. Sorry, that was a bit long. No, thank you. Uh, oh. Hello, uh, my name's Anna, um, and I'm uh, from PDR in Cardiff. Um, we've heard a lot um, about design, which is fantastic, um, and I think the design is a real enabler of crossovers. So I was wondering if you could give some examples um, of design or creativity within your own government organisation, so within the Commission, within the Latvian Ministry, um, within the um, Luxembourg Ministry. Thank you. Okay. We take a couple of more. Uh, Sveta, and then take you. Hello. Um, my question is regarding the European uh, 2020 strategy and how culture is actually missing in it. And the second element of this question relies also to uh, the measurement we use also for contributing to growth and uh, uh, prosperity and jobs in Europe, also in relation to the year 2020. So basically we heard a lot of examples here in the last two days, but I, I want to ask this uh, high-level panel uh, what you plan to do to take into account not only the hardcore contribution, economic contribution measured by GDP, which is basically the core of the EU 2020, and how we're going to measure it, and how we're also uh, drawing interim results on it, how we're going to actually grasp what actually Nikki also mentioned, uh, those um, uh, qualifiable um, contributions of culture, creative uh, industries, creativity, and the crossovers that we're talking about, to really um, to really uh, describe and assess the contribution of everything we do to the European uh, 2020 strategy. Because in the, um, I'm afraid that what we've got up to now as measurements as, and as tools is not enough. And in the political framework we are given now, it's not really taken into consideration. So I have a concern and that's why I think this is the right place to ask. Very good, question. thank, you. thank you. you. We take uh, Ernest back there, yes? Yes, yes, yes. Oh. Brilliant. Hello. Uh, my name is Charles Bushmanis from uh, Riga Technical University. 
and we're currently building a platform in the university to bring creativity, uh, design thinking to the researcher and the engineers we have there. Uh, we're receiving interest from the economics ministry, from the culture ministry, and I'm wondering, do you also have this crossover uh, between ministries uh, in the way you work? Mm -hmm. And how do that happen uh, if you have some interesting example of collaboration? Very good. So a couple of more. Uh, there was here on this uh, side. I think, why this side is more active? Should I be standing on this side? It's or? closer to you, Ragnar. <laughs> For our side, so I'm Christina. For your side. I'm Italian and I have a question. Do you remember the the Green Book, Unlocking the Potential of uh, Cultural and Creative Industries. And do you remember the, the, the framework? The framework included both the so-called public sector, so libraries, archives, museums, and on the other side, the cultural and creative industries, audiovisual, and so on. I have a little bit of the impression that we are speaking about crossover with other aspects, but we, do, we are not speaking about the crossover inside our own subject. In a way, we are giving to our team, the, the, uh, the mission to interact with the private sectors, and we are very concerned with audiences, uh, with uh, interaction with, uh, with public and so on, but the, the, the public sector is, to, is abandoned. <laughs> I think that we have the same problems, the two of us together. We, don't have, we have to, to keep in mind that uh, culture is both uh, a kind of intrinsic value and at the same time as a potential in terms of relationship and economics. And that's true for both, for a museum and for a designer, for a music. So I'm a little scared with this division because uh, it's like to have two wars, but it's, it's not the case. We are in the same boat okay. and it's a Thank nutshell. You. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. I take the one more uh, here in this, no here, uh, Ernest here, here. yes. And then uh, we come uh, to wrap Thank it you. up with these comments. Please. Um, ladies and gentlemen, m Mrs. Ministry of Latvia, Madame Ministre de Luxembourg. Uh, my name is Uzana Komarova and I'm from Slovakia, Ministry of Culture. Um, I'm very thankful for the example with uh, FC Barcelona as far as I'm a huge sports fan. I'm very sorry the Dinamo Riga didn't make it to KHL playoff as didn't do the Slovak team. Uh, but my question would be uh, creative crossovers between culture and sports. Um, do you have an example of sports cooperating with culture at your national level? Or maybe also question for Mr. Zampieri, is there a possibility or chance to do some intensive in incentives in this field that the, that the culture and sport would cooperate more? Because when you uh, watch Olympic Games, and I do, there's also a cultural program at the opening. There's also uh, opera singers singing the national anthems at the KHL sport games. So I really do see a lot of uh, logic in cooperation between sport and culture, but I'm not really uh, seeing it in practice. I'm not seeing it happening. Maybe you have an example in your country, so I'd be really interested. Thank you. Thank you. I see that there's lots of questions bubbling in the room. You will have uh, answers to these questions from, uh, from our panelists. Uh, uh, after the session ends, grab them, talk to them, um, because you're not going to get answers to all these questions. Um, and let's keep on this discussion. But to wrap up, uh, based on these comments that you hear now, I would kind of do the reverse order now, if you allow. So we would first look at the regional and, 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 and the national level here, continuing with, uh, with commission and ending up with uh, the, the ministers, if you allow me, like this, okay? So Andres, from these questions and also from our discussion that we went through, what, what, would, you, what would you like to conclude with? What can we practically do now? A uh, lot of questions were really more into systematic uh, or systemic approach. What as, a, uh, atti as an attitude from policymakers should be, we are a rather big agency, 230 people working, uh, really strongly working with creative industries. And uh, once again, I really think uh, what actually our Dutch colleague said is important to be better at your sales uh, to the industries, because in the, an industry should really understand that creative edge uh, is important. Um, I do not speak 
in particular now about music management or about movie industry, I really think industry using design uh, is an extremely important uh, missing angle in Latvia's economy. So that would be about uh, our country's uh, economics. Very good. Jordi. Yeah, I think that there's a, we've been talking a lot about industries and companies and, and, and economics and, and of course uh, there's a big part of culture or, or the responsible of ministries of culture which is not uh, market oriented and we, we didn't talk about this because I think that when we start talking about crossovers most of the thing it's related to the, to the private relation with public and private sector but uh, all of you know that, uh, that working culture know that there's a part of the arts and culture that can never be market oriented in economic terms. We have to ask for social return, we have to improve our indicators in terms of social return and we have to work hard in audience development and we have to be better but it's impossible to do an opera market oriented. But if that city don't have the opera, if Barcelona don't have the opera of Barcelona, it's a poorer city. You know, in all of terms, socially, economically and everything. But the opera itself, it's not a project that can be market oriented in terms of economic profit. And we have to, to make, as policymakers, I think, and this is what we do, to make a clear distinction with different tools, with different instruments about how to make work the public oriented uh, and the, the, the social oriented culture structures and the private the relation with, between the, pri the public and the private sides and, the, and, and, I need, and I think that they need different tools. One clear example is someone told here the, the football club Barcelona team, the biggest, the most visited museum in Catalonia is the museum of the football club Barcelona team. So, uh, but how can we use this? How can, how can we work together? Creating these groups, working together, sports, culture, tourism, because it's more or less the same. Sagrada Familia, all of you have, if you have been in Barcelona, I think that you have been visiting the temple of Sagrada Familia. It's a temple that started the building in, in, in the beginning of the last century. So, uh, and it's still uh, building every, every day. Uh, this is uh, architecture, this is culture, this is tourism. Uh, what's exactly the Sagrada Familia? It's uh, in the middle of everything. So we have to take uh, a, very, a very wide look at everything and this is a real crossover. Right? This is for me the real, the real crossover, trying to, to distinguish public and private and then try to make it work together as a policymaker. Thank you. Walter, Jean-Francois, Federico, from the Commission side, where, where, where we are now at the moment? What can, what can we do as, a, as next practical steps? This is an interdepartmental <laughs> communication going on, as you can see. Let's give them a bit of time. And uh, no, no, but it's an, an excellent example of coordination. Uh, mm. you have we have a uh, beautiful example on um, how this coordination is being done. We all started to speak at the same time, but uh, then finally we agreed on who is going to go first. This is a good example of negotiation. We, together with other institutions and other commissions and DGs, have um, piloted a project for a working group in order to work on crossover or spillover effects, as well as upon other themes dedicated to competition. Madam Minister, just um, mentioned competition and that is on our agenda as well as alongside with um, innovation and creativity. I think that we have to strive for a common innovation policy in European Union. That's why we have to create something new. Very often innovations and, not, and technology seem seem to be very appealing, but when we look upon the, the same things in reality, they stay in the level of blueprints. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, branding, um, brand making. We have to take uh, into account that as well. There are so-called user-led innovation approaches, those are all new approaches that we have to, first of all, acknowledge. We have to acknowledge their existence. There are 
all kinds of activities in order to learn about this um, phenomenon. We together all look um, at Luxembourg as the um, next presiding country, and so I hope they will have the priorities for next year. Quickly about uh, uh, the issue of uh, measurement. Uh, GDP is a flawed statistic, we all know that, but it's the one we have and it's the one that uh, is m most widely used. So we will never be able to capture completely the contribution of culture to society, but we can try to do better. So we have restarted the work with Eurostat in order to have harmonized figure at EU level, which could be a, a better argument in our discussion internal and external. Uh, about measuring uh, creativity. Again, extremely difficult. This is an experiment. We are very aware of the fact that uh, the results will be shown over time, that maybe trends will be more significant than the initial picture. But we think it is worth trying in any case. Um, about innovation, absolutely central. I would ju just like to recall that we, in the Commission, we work a lot with the Member States in this, uh, in this field. And so we will also work with the Member States, with a working group starting next year, on how to support innovation in the cultural and creative sectors. And that would also be a fundamental contribution, because at the end of the day, the Commission can act as a pilot. We can provide incentives, but for things to change really on the ground, we need the actions to be taken up by the Member States. Brilliant, Federico. Of course, uh, uh, I'm coming from DigiConnect, so we are always looking from the digital part, of you, part and the technology. But uh, my unit uh, itself has done and has tried to contribute it to the cultural cr uh, and creative cr crossover since a long time. We've launched, for example, Europeana that now is becoming a digital service infrastructure. It's a portal where you can access more than 35 million digital objects, among which also uh, ten, uh, more than 100,000 uh, items from the Latvian National Libraries. And talking about the digital service infrastructure means that exactly it, it's a service for Europe. We also fund uh, uh, innovation and we also fund research, as it has been mentioned, to support the creative industries. We are now also considering, and yesterday it was presented, the STAR project, to do the reverse, not only uh, see how ICT can support the cultural and creative industries, but also to see, as I was mentioning before, how can artists and creatives and cultural, uh, and cultural industry support or contribute to the ICT sector? These are all activities that, of course, are, uh, uh, has got a limited budget, but uh, would want to identify some showcases, some pilots that will demonstrate uh, how the cultural and creative crossover can work and can produce benefits not only at digital, at economic level, but also at societal level. And this okay. is what we are trying and we will keep doing in, in collaboration with the other. And do I as assume that the answer to our Wallonian colleague there was that yes, the Commission is ready to go to these places, to in this event, to, to, uh, to raise awareness, talk about these activities uh, uh, more in depth, yes? So the answer to you was yes. Um, Maria. Um, the questions from, uh, from you all, I, th I think governments should still put energy in what I would call matchmaking, facilitating meetings with different parties in the creative sectors, government, research, education. I think that's our main task for the, for the next years. And the other thing um, I would like to mention is that we, we in the Netherlands just started a debate about the new curriculum. Uh, what should be the 21st century skills of people. Um, we don't know yet how to do it. And um, the, I think someone from Britain said, well, it's, it is different in different stages of your education. But we have one motto, and that is that we want to have the professionals of the future, that they have to answer the question, um, do you know what to do or you don't know what to do anymore? And it is those kind of professionals we need to meet the requests of society and industry in the coming years. And it's not easy, but I think that's the task of the governments, the national governments, bring parties together and think what would be the jobs of the future. Be more matchmaking, very well said. Madame Ministre, dernière réflexion? One now. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Uh, yes, we in Luxembourg, as in the new presiding country, we uh, are ready to take over from Latvian presidency, and we will be uh, also ready after this panel discussion to negotiate and to discuss our future plans. And within those two days, I have received a lot of information that has enriched me, uh, given me uh, a lot of experience. It has also encouraged us, because working with uh, the European Union institutions and other uh, countries, uh, we have learned a lot about crossover and spillover effects. And speaking about my colleagues, I would like to uh, say some words about the presidency of Luxembourg, which will start on the 1st of July. The presidency of Luxembourg, I'm turning to Minister La Malbard. Um, the presidency of Luxembourg is going to continue the work of the your presidency. We will work on transnational values, on socioeconomic values, on cultural values, and uh, we believe that we have to work upon the fact that cultural sector, uh, in cooperation with our industries, uh, find some solutions valuing the existing values and valuing the new values. Uh, we, we are going to support uh, projects that will be beneficial for uh, democracy, for e economy of the whole of the European Union, because it uh, gives an impact on all of our civilization. We are speaking about design, creativity, culture, all those domains are very important, and uh, as well as our cultural heritage of each and every European country. And that's why we have to keep informed our population upon our heritage. Otherwise, we will become poorer. Oh, and I believe that it is within um, our uh, beliefs and our for, uh, force to fulfill those goals. goals. Thank you. We are preparing uh, also the Council conclusions on this same issue, which will be presented both in the Cultural Affairs Committee but also in Competitiveness Committee, which is already something uh, uh, unique. What will be uh, the Latvian, as a presidency, the next steps uh, and how you will personally uh, champion this uh, topic? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your question. Of course, uh, as the president, uh, we have to conclude our work with something, <laughs> uh, and uh, we will work on the conclusions, uh, uh, presidency conclusions, uh, in cooperation uh, with uh, with the commission, and uh, we will try to, to integrate all these good ideas we hear today and we have heard yesterday, and uh, we can pick up from the creativity week as such. Uh, so, and uh, of course, we we, we will pay quite a. Uh, not attention to the meeting with the uh, competitiveness <laughs> council uh, to, uh, to, to, to really to promote idea of the need for the uh, more sustained cooperation and dialogue uh, between the ministers representing culture and creative sector and uh, and the ministers representing um, economic sectors and not, not only I think it could be a, a, a first step uh, of course it lays quite on our hence uh, how successful uh, it, it is because then we, if we are successful, we can inspire other colleagues uh, uh, to um, think other ways how to cross our uh, uh, sectors within the uh, commission, uh, within the, uh, within the uh, father, uh, father, father presidencies, and then I'm ha happy to hear that the Luxembourg presidency is interested to cross our uh, um, in, 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 in international <laughs> uh, dimension that, uh, and, and to pay more attention to the cooperation uh, between, between European region and, and uh, culture players uh, with third countries. And, and I think it's very important to really uh, to talk about the dimension, how through culture we can promote uh, relationships with, uh, with, 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 uh, with, the, with the third countries. Uh, so, and then, um, and, and then there was a very good question on the design, how we in the government uh, use design uh, not just for outfits, 
but uh, how we use it for uh, real governance. And I have to totally agree that, that, that this is a question we have to think about. Uh, um, because we'll, we, uh, we as a Ministry of Culture are responsible also for design. Uh, we, uh, already for the second year we are talking uh, and raising awareness on the issue of design thinking. And of course we have to come back to ourselves and ask how much we have used it in our ministry. And I have to say that we haven't done it so much. Uh, we have had we have used design quite a lot for uh, for for uh, um, aesthetical needs. Uh, for des uh, of course, designers uh, are, are always uh, uh, partners for uh, cultural events. Uh, so, but for, for the uh, governmental, uh, for governance, for uh, good governance. Uh, uh, we haven't worked on that, and, and of course, if, if we are a ministry which are promoting the idea, we have to start ourselves and uh, show good example to other ministries and other public institutions that it could work. Paldies, gracias, gracias, Surdano. Thank you. Um,